This is BBC Radio 3. It's just after 11 o'clock. And the first of our essay series this week, A Letter to My Body, in which five thinkers, artists and writers ask themselves how they relate to their own bodies. Our first essayist is Sarah Graham. Sarah is now a successful therapist and addictions counsellor, but in this deeply personal letter she recalls how a dramatic discovery about her own body set her on a path of depression and addiction that nearly killed her. Dear body, this is not going to be an easy letter. Even putting those two simple words, dear and body, together creates conflict inside me. You, my body, know the truth of where we've been together, don't you? Dear body, this letter is in some ways me on my knees, begging for your forgiveness. Dear body, I'm going to unfold before you a secret, subversive map. This map is written on and cuts through every single cell of you, body. It is written in blood, and it is so threatening that many of the best doctors still try to deny and destroy it. Maybe that sounds a tad hysterical in the 21st century. But they label people like me disorders. Disorders of sexual development politely abbreviated to DSDs. We, my body and I, were born on April 15th, 1969 and christened Sarah Louise Georgina Graham. Age three, I had gorgeous long blonde hair and my mummy loved putting it up in ponytails. As a child, I really loved you, body. We had a great relationship back then. I was very sporty, fast, strong, supple. My relationship with you was as tight as two peas in a pod off in my own little fantasy world, going on adventures at the end of the garden, talking to the animals, riding horses too fast. My first addiction was to the adrenaline buzz. Body and I were a highly competitive team. Yes, I was a tomboy, so what? 1977, the Queen's Golden Jubilee, the year of punk. I was forced to put away childish things. My parents found out that my perfect little seven-year-old body was deemed to be not quite right. The doctor was worried that my clitoris was on the big side. Now, big penises are wonderful. You can never be too big, can you, sir? A baby boy with a large member is something to be proud of, just like his dad. But there are firm rules about how big a girl's clitoris can be. Like a Freudian nightmare made real, doctors hold the power to castrate, and having spotted a problem between my legs, they started looking for conclusive evidence that my body was something they would need to fix. My mouth was scraped and my skin was pierced. I was held down against my will and blood was taken. The red liquid surrendered dark sex secrets. My body became an object, a case. It was examined by a world eminent gynaecologist and his army of medical students. I had the feeling that it was a great privilege to be of such interest. With my clothes back on, some part of me had gone AWOL. One day, when I got home from school, Mum burst into tears as she told me that I had to go back to London to have a little operation. Now, there are some sentences that we all dread hearing. You've got cancer is probably at the top of most people's list. Being told you can't have children is another. I was only eight when the doctors gave my parents the devastating news that I have a very rare genetic condition and that if my ovaries weren't removed, I would develop cancer when I reach puberty and die. The Grim Reaper had my number. Mum wouldn't stop crying. I really wanted her to stop all the emotion. It's okay. I don't even want to have a baby. But she carried on when I found that being the only child on a ward in a women's hospital wasn't the fun experience I had imagined. I quickly realised that I had no rights over my body. If I refused to give blood and tried to run away, they caught me and held me down. I snuck into the phone box and called my teacher and begged her to come and rescue me. She cried, but she never came. Looking back now, dear body, I can see my happy childhood laying dead on the operating table. I'm floating above it, a scarred body and soul carried a mistrusting loner back to school. When I sit here now and let myself reflect and really feel what's going on, dear body, my heart aches and the extreme cruelty and punishment done to my innocent dear body starts to choke me. More than most, I have pondered, God, why am I the way I am? From an early age, I was put on drugs, little orange pills called HRT, 
breasts came, but at 14 the humiliation of not much pubic hair and still no periods. Another revelation from a different doctor. You haven't got a womb. Oh, didn't they tell you? God knows how much I have channeled my anger and fear into trying to destroy you, dear body. Drinking alcohol from 12, cannabis, speed, acid, and anything else I could lay my hands on at 14. Two suicide attempts before turning 16. Dangerous, abusive relationships. Unsafe sex with strangers. Partly I'm shaped by trauma, but I'm also cut from genetic cloth that includes alcoholism and addiction on both sides of my family. After three spells in prison for peaceful protesting, Goldsmiths College gave me a golden ticket to successful living. Putting down drink and drugs and moving to halls of residence, I fixed on work, exercise, and soon became student president. On the outside, things looked rosy. Won a Guardian Media Award, big shot, big ego, big bar bills. Talking of big, one day, age 25, after years of lies to my parents as well as myself, a gynecologist finally told me the true nature of the diagnosis, which they'd all known since I was eight years old, that the ovaries they cut out of my dear little child body, leaving faint silvery diagonal lines that bear witness to what was taken, were in fact testes. I found out that I'm an intersex woman. Instead of XX chromosomes, I have XY but I was born a girl, and I have the birth certificate to prove it. You, my body, look very female, and I have never questioned my sex. But inside me, instead of ovaries, I had testes. A small word that exploded inside my mind like an atom bomb. 